Thank you very much. If you've come to hear about the nitty-gritty details of the budget, you're not going to hear about it from me. I want to talk more about the, the, the bigger picture in terms of where the budget fits in terms of fiscal policy. I, I want to focus on the macroeconomic impact and significance of the budget. I'll say something briefly about the medium-term strategy with which it fits into. I will say a little bit, um, uh, and I think it's more what you have to say on Budget 2012 and the details I will be interested in. Um, talk about the macroeconomic impact and focus on something that people don't talk about, but they ought to in this context, which is the balance of payments. Um, the external environment is crucial to everything. Um, it's extremely unfavourable, and it could become much more favourable after Saturday, or it could become even more unfavourable. And really, um, forecasting, in a normal world, you produce your forecast, and around that there's a range of possibilities. In the last four or five years, we've found ourselves in a most unusual situation where you have scenarios, and it could be one or the other, but it's not going to be in between. Hopefully, it's going to be one um, and not the other in this case. Um, already, we're seeing which, under any normal circumstances, would be excessive fiscal tightening in the European Union, in that Italy, uh, France, should not have to tighten their fiscal policy at this point. It's not optimal from an economic point of view normally, but when you see risk premia rising the way they are, then it turns what would be normal fiscal approach to fiscal policy, a counter-cyclical fiscal policy, it turns it on its head. So we're facing a, a European economy where even if everything is sorted out uh, at the weekend, um, uh, the European economy is not going to grow at its potential growth rate over the coming uh, year. And that faces problems for us, and there's been a downward adjustment in the forecast. If they don't sort everything out, well, then all bets are off in terms of forecasting anything. Um, and if the EU is in recession, then the German government will fail to meet its fiscal targets, the French government will fail to meet its fiscal targets, the Italian government will fail to meet its fiscal targets. It's just not going to happen. I'm assuming um, that things are sorted, sorted out within a reasonable time scale. Um, the medium-term strategy is to return Ireland to a sustainable growth path and need to basically eliminate borrowing by 2016. Um, uh, resulting in a falling debt GDP ratio reasonably rapidly and to bring down the cost of borrowing. If the cost of borrowing had remained unchanged, then one might take a longer period to make the adjustment. But given, uh, we, actually the cost of borrowing, thanks to the generosity of our partners, is very low at the moment, but after 2014 we will be on our, o on our own two feet, hopefully, and it will be higher. So um, that changes things. Um, the budget and successive budgets are pro-cyclical. They're taking money out of the economy um, when the economy is in recession. Um, unfortunately, and all the rules change in what's optimal policy when interest rates um, are what I call endogenous. They are affected by the amount of borrowing you're doing by the fiscal situation. Once adjustment is completed, um, will we lift off? Who knows? Um, and I'll come back to that and say something of the balance of payments. Um, this is just a summary of the amount of money that's been taken out of the economy over the um, last eight, 2008, 9, 10, 11. 20 billion in ex ante. And by that mean, the government have decided to cut expenditure and increase taxes by this amount. As the minister made clear, as every minister makes clear, you don't actually achieve the cuts you intend to make because you deflate the economy and tax revenue falls and unemployment goes up as a result of what you do. So the ex post effects, and I'll come back to that, are rather different. Um, in terms of the fiscal stance, and this I think I found it slightly surprising, this compared to a neutral budgetary policy shows since 1976, Richie, Richie, Richie Ryan's last budget of 76, which is the toughest budget of all time, it shows whether budget budgets, if they're below the line, are taking money out of the economy, or above the line, pumping money in. And what you see is an unparalleled string of four budgets so far, and this will be the fifth, which is taking money out of the economy. Even in the 80s, 83, four, um, 83 budget was the second toughest of all time, um, and uh, 84 wasn't, uh, was, was pretty tough, and then you rather eased off in 85, 6, and you see 87, 8 there. Um, so the size of the deflationary impact is actually less than people think, because with falling prices, when you cut salaries, when you cut welfare payments, the impact of that is less than you think. So that actually, in the 2008 Nine, or in the 9-10 period with falling prices, things were not as deflationary. We're looking at a period now when it is likely that 
prices will rise next year. So I'm not sure. We haven't done our sums yet on what 2012 will look. Um, it, it, could, it could actually turn out ex post to be um, um, uh, tougher than, than, than last year, although that would be a surprise. Um, the effect of all of this, um, I just showed the national debt. Um, the fiscal debt is due to government borrowing. Uh, liquid assets, um, we hold a lot of liquid, liquid assets, um, and that's cash or, or, or shares that could be liquidated, not that many at the moment. Um, it's mostly cash. And then the effect of the banks um, is 40% of GDP. I saw an interesting graph, actually, which showed figures for a number of other ge economies. And actually, the figure for Germany, um, the bank the cost of the bank failure is 10 percentage points onto the German jet debt GDP ratio. It would be 70 in Germany absent the crisis in banks. It would be uh, 20 percentage points lower in Britain. Uh, so our 40 percent is certainly an all-time record. Um, um, I don't have figures for Iceland, but um, we're not alone. Um, right, this is uh, 2012 now was announced yesterday, and the ex ante cuts are two and just 2.5% of GDP. So it was a pretty tough budget um, uh, on the face of it. The budgets are meant to become steadily easier, um, although quite gradually out to 2015. And the plan is to take a further 7.5 percentage points of GDP out of the economy. These are pretty dramatic figures by any standards compared to any other uh, European economy other than, say, Greece or possibly Portugal. Um, it's a very large cuts, uh, which are essential if we are to um, restore the public finances to stability. Um, I think if the EU sorts things out at the weekend, you're likely to see some recovery in the European economy, certainly from quarter two on next year. And I think probably the government will meet its targets. There is some leeway in terms of interest payments where they may have been a, a, a bit high, and there's other income. There are a range of areas where there's some scope for some slight s slippage. Um, however, Brian Lennon left a, a, a tremendous legacy for Michael Noonan in the carryover effects of the budget taxes that he announced last year in his budget was 700 million. Um, into this year. Actually, it was more, but some of it was given away since. So that the tax cuts, which were to have been 1.6 billion, actually the minister only had to raise a billion because Brian Lennon had raised the other 600 million and taken the opprobrium for him. There is much less carryover on the tax side into next year out of this budget. Um, so the next year's budget, where he's due to raise a billion, will be at least as tough, and he's taken some of the easier routes. So next year's budget is going to be more difficult on the tax side. Um, as against that, on the expenditure side, there is some carryover. The social welfare cuts, and it remains to be seen what happens in disability, but there's a very long tail to the effects there. They will continue to cut the effects of what was announced yesterday or the day before will have a continuing effect cutting expenditure over the next five, seven years. So the carry, there is a carryover. A lot of the unpleasant measures to be announced in the next three or four years are already announced. Um, there's one also, and I don't know whether there's anybody from finance here can answer this question. If you look at the budget that the pay bill is down by 1%, employment is down by, I think, 2.25%. And I presume the difference is the lump sum payments on the six or 7,000 people who are expected to retire in the next three months. Um, say, take 6,000 people at a lump sum of 80,000 per head, that's 500 million. And that would be a once-off payment because you won't, see these, this is, you won't see subsequent retirements like this. So the expenditure may be higher this year because of the cost of the early retirements. It could be even more than 500 million. And the next year, you won't have that 500 million expenditure. And the fall in numbers will produce a fall in expenditure. So actually, on the expenditure side, things may be less difficult in subsequent years than they look. But on the tax side, um, there's going to be property tax in 2014, but where he's going to raise the billion next year is going to be an issue. Um, the budget, could it be better? If so, how? I'll leave it to you to answer that. Um, could be better, could be worse, like my school report. Um, should it have been more ambitious? Um, on the tax side, um, coasting through, it doesn't feel like coasting with a billion taken out with that, but it does mean next year is going to be just as difficult as this one, which may be difficult to, more difficult to deliver on. Um, you'd like to see more reform in the public sector. There's actually the reallocation of staff, and in order to do so, Croke Park is a constraint. 
where you may have a load of administrators in the HSE, I don't know. Um, you may be short of nurses, I don't know. But you can't turn an administrator into a nurse overnight. And it is the inflexibility of not being able to transfer people, uh, transfer resources, uh, you've got to transfer people, is a problem. Um, so that the reforms in the public sector are less than one would have liked. There are microeconomic issues where um, a colleague of mine did a study on Italian water, which is actually very similar to Irish water, and showed you could have the cost of delivering water in Italy. Um, you could probably do the same because we have very similar structure here. There are issues for the future which are complicated and may have political difficulties where we could deliver uh, efficiency gains and that's not part of the budget. Um, I'm concerned about issues of poverty traps. I think we need to go back and look at the interaction of the tax and welfare system and the labour market. Um, um, because the labour market is going to be very important. At the moment there mayn't be jobs, but in a recovery phase there will be and getting people back to work is going to be important. And we've seen sort of the issues in disability benefit. Some of it is dealing with uh, poverty traps, um, and I think that that needs fur fur further thought. Downside risks, the weekend. Um, um, delivery and implementation issues. Um, we see already um, signs that they may have to slip on certain issues in the budget. Um, uh, what are the consequences of that? They'll have to find the money elsewhere. If a rot were to set in, which I don't actually see happening, um, and they're giving ground in a number of different areas, that could be serious. But I, 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 I don't see that actually happening. And lab labour market issues, um, that, that not so much for this budget, for subsequent budgets, that if you look, there's a need to cut social welfare um, um, by 500 million in additional cuts, I think, next year, and a total of a billion in additional cuts in 2014. It can be very difficult. That's over and above what's already announced. However, if the recovery were to start in 2013 and unemployment would begin to fall, then a lot of that might turn out to be a reduction in social welfare costs as a result of reduction in unemployment. So getting, when recovery comes, getting people back into jobs is going to be really important. The upside is domestic confidence could return sometime when? To return early. I don't see anybody feeling um, happy um, in the next month or two, um, but it could be 2013, um, if not that 2014, which could deliver a better outcome. I just show here the unemployment data by level of education. And if you look at 1990 there, 80% um, um, uh, of people in 1990 had not completed high school. They didn't have a leaving certificate. Whereas in, in April 2010, um, you will see that 60% of people um, who are unemployed either had leaving cert or university education. So the chances of the unemployed today getting jobs in a growing labour market are much higher than it was in the early 90s. And the 90s, it wasn't at the end of the 90s that we sorted out the unemployment problem. Given a decent economic recovery, given investment in the problem group, which is the least qualified, that you could see by the second half of the decade, a return to unemployment. But it will require plans now to prepare people for this, in particular the, le the least employable. And I don't see much point sending uh, a university graduate on a false course, because that university graduate will either emigrate or get a job anyway in a recovery. Um, um, but it is the people who don't have skills for the labour market that will be there in, in three, four years' time are a problem. And the budget didn't really tackle that issue. Um, the economic impact, the ex-ante cut over the next four years would be 7.5% of GDP. But that takes uh, no account of, of the credibility effect. If we bring down interest rates as a result of doing this, and they probably would have been infinite if we didn't do it, then the, 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 the effects could actually be positive um, if, if, if interest rates came down to 3% in 2014. I don't see that, but um, if, certainly um, um, it, it, it's a necessary action. The deflationary impact of the budget uh, in a stand measure, with standard measure is going to reduce the level of GDP by 2015 by 2.5 percentage points. It's, each budget will knock at least a half percent, probably more than a half percent, off the actual growth rate. So instead of finance saying 1.3 percent this year, the growth rate this year will be over 2 percent absent the budget. Um, it is significantly deflationary. But the other aspect of it, and it's what I want to end on, is the balance of payment surplus will be four percentage points higher by 2015. Ireland is running a balance payment surplus last year, a bigger one this year. And the reason is 
Exports have done well, but also the government have knocked hell out of us. We're not spending any money. We're not investing, and the balance payment surplus is rising all of the time. And also, the effect of these cuts, while it's 7.4% is the actual cut, the reduction in the deficit as a result of the cuts would be 4 percentage points of GDP. Um, um, you're coming down from 10 down to, to, to 3, so about 3% will be because of growth of 3% a year in 2013 and 14. Focusing on the balance of payments, I think there, I disagree with the Department of Finance numbers on this. They, they're suggesting a balance of payments surplus of 3.7% 3, 3 of GDP in 2015. Without the fiscal adjustment, there would be a deficit on my numbers if they weren't doing the fiscal adjustment and everything else went on as normal, or abnormal as the case may be, um, there would be actually a balance of payments deficit. It'd get, the balance of payments would get worse in spite of the fact that exports are doing well and nobody's spending any money at home. That doesn't stack up. Um, and I think that this Department of Finance have seriously underestimated the cumulative effects of what they're doing on the balance of payments surplus by 2015. Every euro of exports produced probably about 0.3, 0.2, 0 0.3 onto GDP when you net out imports and factor payments and so on. Um, and uh, you are seeing exports actually doing reasonably well. So the balance payment surplus could go over 5% if exports continue to perform um, 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 and if nobody wakes up and spends money. Of course, if we all go out and spend and splurge, there won't be balance payment surplus, but there won't be a government deficit either. Um, I just show here the last few years where the money's gone. In green, the government are borrowing like mad on our behalf. But uh, the people of Ireland, we the people of Ireland, are saving like mad. We're saving more, actually, than, than the government are borrowing. Um, um, both the company sector and the household sector, and we're not spending the money. So we're repaying mass, the foreign debt more rapidly than the government is borrowing, and it has implications. And over the four years, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, the private sector will repay 40% of GDP in debt abroad net. Um, um, and that is assuming the Department of Finance figures on balance payment surplus. If the balance payment surplus is larger, the repayment will be larger. At some stage, people will have restored their balance sheets. And remember, it's not just the highly indebted people. There are loads of people in their late 20s, early 30s who are wise enough or too young to buy a house, who have actual financial assets, who have jobs. And at some stage, that will turn around. It is not sustainable for an economy like Ireland to have a balance payment surplus of 5 or 7.5% of GDP in the subsequent five years. How, how, how will that change? And the way it will change is that people will go out and either invest or spend to bring the balance payment surplus down to a more normal level. We're not the Chinese economy. We're not going to run huge balance payment surplus forever. We probably need a small one. And every one percentage point reduction in the balance payment surplus could be a one percentage point, depending on what people spend their money on, will improve the government's finances by one percent. So if the balance payment surplus is five percent of GDP in 2015, if the government's deficit were still three percent of GDP, I think finance of 2.9, that would translate in the immediate subsequent years into a government surplus of two percentage points of GDP without the government raising taxes or cutting expenditure. It suggests that we're doing a lot of heavy lifting in the current years, which will produce a benefit and the economy could round, bound back. And I think that we need to pay more attention to what's happening on the balance payments because it is also telling you what households and companies' balance sheets are doing. And the key to the recovery in this economy will not be the government stopping to to, to cut or stopping, to raise ta stopping raising taxes, but it will be when we, the people of Ireland, decide to go out and invest or buy. Conclusions. Um, the effects of the budget are totally dependent um, on the restoration of EU growth, um, and that goes without saying. Um, I think providing that, the, uh, that there is a, a, an outcome, or a reasonably successful outcome, um, before the end of the year, I think we will see enough growth in Europe to make the Department of Finance forecast sustainable, in which case they should meet their targets. There's a little, uh, some room for slippage. Um, it will continue to impact on growth next year, in that the growth rate, as I say, would be over 2% were it not for what the government has to do. Um, but the re restoration of the public finances does go hand in hand with the balance payment surplus. Um, and that balance of payment surplus is the sign that this economy, unlike many others, is in a sustainable position. And it's interesting to look, uh, and I 
gave a paper in, in Brussels uh, two weeks ago in DG ECFIN, looking at the adjustment across a range of countries. The countries which had property or investment bubbles were Latvia, Estonia, uh, Ireland, Bulgaria, um, Spain. And investment was a huge share of GDP. And investment collapsed, and there are massive adjustment to balance payments in Ireland, in Estonia, and Latvia, not as much in, a, in, in Spain. And th 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 they've all moved into surplus. But the effect of a collapse in the building construction sector is in every single one of them, unemployment rates rose by nine percentage points or more. In the economies which have balance payment surplus but didn't have an investment bubble, like Portugal or Greece the, or Hungary, um, the problems are more difficult. Um, um, but the rise in unemployment has been less. But for Ireland, once you've reached that balanced payment surplus, once you are repaying your debts, forget what the government is doing, net the thing out, you are in a different position. And it is only a question of time before you see a real recovery in the economy. Thank you.